so we will be basically discussing in the labor room that is for common labor procedures which antibiotics should be used and how so now we start with the topic and um first of all because we're discussing mainly antibiotic prophylaxis what does prophylaxis mean prophylaxis means the treatment given or action taken to prevent disease any treatment given or action taken to prevent disease is known as prophylaxis and when we talk about antibiotic or surgical antibiotic prophylaxis to be more specific it is defined as the use of antibiotics to prevent infections at the surgical site okay now the main question is should we use antibiotics in labor now it is something which we take for granted we give antibiotics to every other patient in labor right but should we actually give antibiotics to every other patient in labor okay what is the thinking behind it now for the longest time antibiotics were given routinely because there was it was thought that there is no drawback there is no side effect of it but it has been found antibiotics actually what they do they are increasing microbial resistance right so the benefit we all know it's going to prevent infections right but we should also know the downside of giving antibiotics without a proper reasoning or a proper guideline it is going to increase microbial resistance also it alters neonatal gut flora okay and it changes the microbiome of the neonate and in fact in, instead of helping the neonate it's going to worsen the immune response which should be naturally built so there's a lot of talk about altering gut flora of the newborn increasing microbial resistance because of um, indiscriminate use of antibiotics and hence we need to be very very careful and decide for which patient should we give antibiotic which patient should we not give antibiotic if we're giving which antibiotic should we give if we're not giving what is the reason or if you're giving what is the timing we should give so all that we'll be discussing so as i said timing <clears throat> if we're giving timing is of paramount importance because the goal is to have adequate tissue levels before exposure to a pathogen that's how prophylaxis with antibiotics is going to work now as i said there's so many guidelines and i all i get this question asked a lot um, on different platforms ki okay, ma'am which guideline do we follow do we follow acog do we follow who do we follow rcog do we follow figo and to make you more confused i put the international federation of gynae and obs that is figo then the icog this is indian college of obs and gynae and rcog and nice are both uk guidelines okay so which one do we follow uh, <clears throat> and the answer is at least for different topics some th so different guidelines are important and when you discuss this topics whenever i discuss a topic i tell you which guideline is important but for this antibiotic for the purpose of this lecture i actually went through all these guidelines right to make it easier for you and to be very honest most of these guidelines are very very similar hai na and and that makes our job easier but i still put them together as different different topics because for example i indian guidelines are hardly there so figo guidelines are also very very minimal so the most of the guidelines are going to be acog the american the who the rcog and the nice guidelines who guidelines remember if you say now name i'm just tell us one word remember we need to remember one only then who is a very good guideline because who is uniform it doesn't see your resource whether you are working in a in a high resource setting or a low resource setting it's sort of common for all different places developed countries developing countries whereas american and uk guidelines are very specific and the evidence is based on studies done in that particular country so who is more generalized and that is one if you ask me ma'am ek batao so that would be a better one but yes for this topic i have gone through all the guidelines and i've tried to help put everything together so you understand better so basically in when i say acog what have i referred to there is a 2000 and um 18 guideline on use of prophylactic antibiotics in labor and delivery in the who there are a lot of recent updates these are all very recent guidelines which i put together 2021 there are a lot of recent updates and these are the updates i'm sure you're very familiar with this intrapartum care or who 2018 guideline and these are 2021 updates then we have the nice guidelines intrapartum care uh cesarean birth nice is basically um the national institute of health and care excellence and this is a uk and wales based guideline and along with nice we have the rcog guidelines also so nice and rcog are basically meant for the uk and so these are the guidelines i put together 
सो लेट एस स्टार्ट नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल गोइंग बियॉन्ड लेबर लेट स्टार्ट विद एंटीबायोटिक जो हमें सब में देना ही है किस में देना वी हैव टू गिव एंटीबायोटिक फॉर ऑल इन ड्यूरिंग अजेरियन डिलीवरी राइट सो लेट्स डिस्कस द गाइडलाइंस फॉर एंटीबायोटिक्स ड्यूरिंग अजेरियन डिलीवरी नाउ सो लेट्स डिस्कस इन सिजेरियन डिलीवरी वॉट आर द गाइडलाइन सो वील स्टार्ट सो सो आई पुट द गाइडलाइन इमेज ऑन टॉप सो यू नो विच गाइडलाइन दिस इज दिस इज फ्रॉम ए सी ओ जी okay of course in the end i will put everything together and tell you but remember before as i said before most of the guidelines are very very similar now what the acog says is that all cesarean deliveries unless already on broad spectrum coverage okay you should give within 60 minutes before the start of the cesarean delivery antibiotic prophylaxis should be given within 60 minutes before starting the cesarean this is done if suppose the patient is already on antibiotics for whatever reason she's in labor you're doing an emergency cesarean and she's already on antibiotics then <clears throat> it's not required because already tissue levels would be high but suppose you are taking an acute emergency so in fetal distress you're rushing to the ot you forget to give the antibiotic then what do you do if you can't give it within 60 minutes administer as soon as possible after giving the skin incision This is what the ACOG says. So you give antibiotics, preferably within sixty minutes of starting the cesarean, or <clears throat> that's not possible. Give as soon as you've given the skin incision. I'm sure most of this is being followed in most places. Now, which antibiotic do you do you give? What does the ACOG say? The ACOG says that if there's no allergy, you have to give the antibiotic of choice. or the recommended antibiotic is cefazolin what is cefazolin it is a first generation cephalosporin okay so basically you can give a first generation cephalosporin the common one we give this very often it comes with the name reflin i don't know where ever you're practicing what so the name available <clears throat> but cefazolin is the recommended antibiotic by the acog again depending on the bmi if a bmi is less that is a normal bmi or weight less than 80 kg 1 gram is enough if the weight is more or the bmi is more than 30 then 2 gram if the patient has any allergic reaction when you give the test to she develops an allergy or she has a known allergy then what do you do in place of cefalosporin you can give 900 mg clindamycin and an aminoglycoside that is amikacin or gentamicin at 5 mg per kg Okay, so very important. This is which antibiotic is the preferred antibiotic? A first generation cefalosporin, cefazolin is to be preferred. Okay, and if the patient has an allergy, then clinda plus amica or gentamicin. Now also remember that um uh this may be separate from what is practiced in your institute. Okay, and if your institute is practicing giving something else, you should question the practices. Of course, in a gentle way, you can ask. Whoever is responsible, or your faculty, if you have a, a nice, friendly faculty, just ask them why this, because why they prefer that antibiotic. Because I'm sure in many places, different antibiotics are given. But this is what is recommended, and the reasoning behind it, you should you're giving it for prophylaxis. Patient is not having any signs of infection. You're giving it for prophylaxis, so you want to go with the first generation cefalosporin rather than straight away jumping to a second or a third or a fourth generation cefalosporin. Right, and this is to minimize antibiotic resistance. Mm -hmm.